How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to talk about our next potential Midwest and Northeast snowstorm that could happen right around late this weekend into early next week. So if we were to take a look at what the GFS model is currently stating as of the latest run we of course have this atmospheric river impacting the coast of California bringing numerous reports of flash flooding throughout the LA area and the entirety of southern California in general. Now this storm system is expected to continue to move further eastward so we should eventually see the rain wind down in Southern California and eventually it should bring some heavier snowfall in the higher elevations of Nevada extending into the Sierra mountain ranges of California and anywhere that's above 7,000 feet that's where you should expect over two feet of snow and the snowfall could move um, as low as 4,500 feet where you could maybe see a little bit more than three inches of snowfall as low as that elevation in portions of California and other areas along the western half of the United States. So definitely watch out for that um, in those areas if you live in the higher elevations. And if you're hoping to go skiing, then certainly this snowfall will help with that and additional snowfall. So definitely, um, so definitely look forward to that if you're um, hoping to maybe go skiing or snowboarding this weekend because this storm system will definitely bring plenty more snowfall on top of the snowfall that's already um, over a lot of these areas along the western half of the United States. But moving forward, we do see there's going to be a strong ridge. And I did mention in my last video that this storm system isn't going to move far south enough to bring snowfall in the more populated areas a little bit further southward along the eastern side of the U.S. where um, where the snowfall will mainly be relegated on the northwestern portion where portions of North Dakota and Montana will get involved but outside of that not really much of any snowfall in the more populated areas and in terms of the amount of snowfall you should expect right around one to three inches of snowfall um to three to six in some localized areas um so definitely watch out for that it should happen by the way right around the thursday time frame so um thursday going into friday morning definitely be prepared for a light amount of snowfall over north dakota and potentially as far east as northwestern Minnesota but past this storm system this isn't a storm system I'm gonna talk uh, mainly focus on in this video because there's gonna be another low that's gonna come off the Pacific Northwest coast move southward bring a decent amount of cold air with it and enhance the instability enough to where another major winter storm could develop and it could move a little bit further southward and impact the more populated area so this the latest run of the GFS model this is the 18Z run. And if we were to go the move forward day by day, so by Friday, the snowfall should move into the Pacific Northwest. And the low pressure system is rather weak, right around 1,010 millibars. And um, this snowfall could move into the areas that are in the lower elevation. So portions like, Port um, so cities like Portland and Seattle could get involved with some snowfall because there's going to be a decent amount of cold air just in front of this low pressure system. So you aren't out of the woods when it comes to winter weather, even in the lowly elevated cities along the Pacific Northwest. So definitely be aware of that by the time we approach the Friday morning time frame. As in those areas, I'll say right around Seattle and Portland, I don't expect may maybe anything more than an inch, but you sh should certainly expect uh our mixing of rain and snow and in the higher elevations of course this isn't a powerful storm system but it still could be enough to dump around 6 to 12 inches of snowfall on top of the snowfall you already experienced from this storm system so definitely be aware of that right around the friday morning into friday afternoon time frame and by the friday evening time frame the snow should move into california and the low pressure system will eventually weaken just a bit as it moves southward it won't have a lot of instability to work with but that'll change once it enters the proximity of texas where it's gonna tap into that very warm and humid air mass that's located right over the state of course associated with the warmer sea surf temperatures of the gulf of mexico but in areas like arizona expect some snowfall in the higher elevations and we could see some snowfall in the panhandle of florida right around the sunday evening to early monday time frame and this storm system will continue to intensify we do see quite a bit of thunder shower activity occurring just to the east of this storm system like i said 
there's a decent amount of cold air behind it interacting with a fairly warm air mass that's just to the east of it. So that's just asking for a lot more lift to occur and a lot more convective activity on the eastern side. And continuing to move forward with the forecast, we clearly see there's plenty of rainfall throughout the southeast. But more importantly, by the time this approaches the northeast, there's expected to be just enough cold air for potentially a major snowstorm to impact the Interstate 95 corridor cities like where places in this scenario on the Tuesday night to uh, early Wednesday time frame would experience 6 to 12 inches of snowfall right over Washington DC, Philadelphia, New York City and even Boston could get involved with some snowfall. Now look at the forecast hour I'm going at. I'm going right around 7 to 8 days out so there's still plenty of time for the computer models to really um, get their forecasts a little bit more certain to really increase their confidence because we're bound to see many more changes with the computer models before it really gets a good idea of where this storm system will go. So we're still definitely going to need to keep that in mind and keep tabs on this storm system over the next few days because we're bound to see plenty of changes. But there's going to be several keys out to determine whether or not you're going to experience snow in the northeast because there's still the other scenario where the European model expects the snowfall to be a lot further westward and mainly focuses in on the midwest while the northeast would experience a rain event so let me quickly show you guys that scenario right now so the european model as of its latest run the 12z run so moving forward with the forecast we see the european model on the other hand takes a snowfall focusing in more on the midwest and in this scenario Kansas gets involved with a significant snowstorm. Kansas City as well, um, northern Missouri, and even Chicago gets involved with a pretty significant snowstorm. And what's interesting also is that this storm system is a lot more powerful. So that's so you need to worry about gusty winds in a scenario like this as well in the Midwest. But we clearly see that this is entirely a rain event for the Northeast. So we see a pretty big difference when it comes to the trajectory of this storm system between the two most reliable computer models, which definitely makes this forecast a lot more uncertain. So we're definitely going to need to see how these two computer models shift their forecasts. And really the key thing that will determine um, where this storm system will go is the amount of ridging just to the east of the slow. If the ridging ends up being um, growing a little bit stronger than anticipated, then we, sh of course, should see a stronger southerly flow that would push the storm further northward. Let me actually show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly right now. So if we were to see the ridging grow stronger than anticipated, so here's this first low pressure system, not really much to worry about um, in the US, but this is a snowstorm we're talking about. This core right here where the height anomaly is definitely a lot lower um, than average thanks to the lower amount of air pressure right around um where um right around the height at which the air pressure is 500 millibar the height is a lot lower than um, what you typically see um where um when it comes to the location where you find the air pressure to be 500 millibars so there's a low pressure system right here and we what's interesting is that we see the region grow a lot sh more quickly and grows a lot more stronger than what the gfs model is stating which is the reason why it forces the slow to move a lot further northward since the region grows a lot quicker and the low that could be the catalyst in weakening this um, ridge isn't strong enough and it isn't moving fast enough to weaken this ridge enough for this storm to move eastward so we see this ridge grow a lot stronger and a lot more quickly so this forces the storm to take a northward track a lot further westward but if we were to take a look um, um, at the Europe, at the GFS model scenario on the flip side when it comes to the 500 millibar height anomaly and let me go to the 18z run we see the opposite occur where the low pressure system that's expected to be just to the north of this storm system right here and another low um, that's located right around British Col um, Columbia of Canada. Um, we clearly see that um, this low is a lot stronger. It moves a lot more quickly so it weakens this ridge to the point where the southerly winds associated with the western side of this ridge isn't strong enough to steer this northward very quickly and it doesn't take us and it doesn't take a track just very slightly northward until a lot later by the time we approach a Tuesday time frame which is the reason why 
the GFS model expects snowfall and the cold air to be a lot further eastward since the ridging is a lot weaker just to the east of this storm system. So the key thing we're going to need to keep in mind is how strong this ridge will develop and that will be determined by how strong and how quickly this low will move by the time it approaches the western Canadian coast. Um, so we're definitely going to need to pay very close attention to these two factors before we can jump to a reasonable conclusion regarding um, who exactly will receive the heaviest snowfall from this storm system as the possibilities are pretty much endless at this point in time on where this storm system could go. So definitely keep tabs on this as I'll certainly keep you guys updated. But let's say if the GFS model scenario was completely correct, um, bringing snowfall to the Interstate 95 corridor. So taking a look at that forecast, we clearly see that um, the GFS model brings a heavier snowfall right over the mid-Atlantic where places like Washington DC and Baltimore would experience over six inches of snow from this scenario. And New York City is getting involved as well. So at, is Philadelphia where Philadelphia and New York City experience maybe around two to four inches of snowfall, but it could easily be more than that if we were to see the storm system move just slightly for northward and even Boston experiences right around three to six inches of snowfall. So this could be a significant snowstorm for the northeast if the GFS model was completely correct, as I'll certainly keep you guys updated if we do see any changes with the forecast. Now, um, taking a look at um, the European model scenario on the flip side, which is certainly taking a very different trajectory, but still expects a pretty major winter storm to impact the Midwest. We clearly see a large area of 6 to 12 inches of snowfall extending from northern Oklahoma, northern Texas, um, throughout almost the entirety of Kansas, especially southern Kansas, extending into um, northern Missouri, where Kansas City gets involved with right around 6 the 12 inches of snowfall Il um, northwestern Illinois especially gets involved with 6 to 12 inches of snowfall while Chicago is right on the border between experiencing 6 to 12 inches of snowfall to maybe only around 1 to 3 it's going to um, if a scenario like this were to occur it'll be a fairly tight forecast for Chicago but Milwaukee easily experiences 6 to 12 inches of snowfall from this scenario and same goes for northern Michigan as well so Definitely a lot to keep in mind over the next few days regarding the trajectory of this storm system, but it's um, but it seems likely we're at least going to see some sort of snowfall in the northeast by the time we approach early next week, which would occur right anywhere between February 12th to February 14th. So definitely stay tuned. I'll definitely keep you guys updated with the next few forecast videos over the next few days. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.